great boxing truism. You don't have to win all of your fights. You don't have to always be great for the fans to love you if you give it all you've got. And he has. Before he was ferocious Fernando Vargas, he was precocious Fernando Vargas. Look at Fernando go! Youngest ever American national amateur champion, youngest member of the 1996 Olympic boxing team, he burst into professional boxing like a comet. Campus has had enough. Fernando Vargas, at 21 years old, is a world champ. When he clearly beat the vastly more experienced Ike Quarte in only his 19th fight, the street-hardened California kid appeared on the verge of a surefire Hall of Fame career. And he had already built a bond with the boxing public most fighters couldn't match in a lifetime. So when a dream fight with Tito Trinidad revolved into view, it was easy to forget he was still only 22. Big left hook by Trinidad and Vargas is stunned. Vargas is stunned and down. How much was lost in that one disastrous night when the meanest dog in the pound knocked the eager puppy down five times, shattering Vargas's uninterrupted upward climb? And that'll do it. A huge victory for Tito Trinidad. It was a sadder but no wiser Vargas, who a year and a half later achieved his long expressed holy grail of matching up with Oscar De La Hoya. Hard right hand by Vargas. Landed flush. And Vargas takes over. And though he threatened De La Hoya with his visible strength and passion, he seemed in the end to have forgotten his skills. And the far smarter matador knocked the young bull out. There's so much desire in Fernando Vargas, but a better fighter is feeding it now. The low point came when Fernando tested positive for steroids after the fight. And since then, it's been a struggle to get past nagging injuries and doubts as to how much of his once precocious talent is left. Are there more big fights, more unforgettable moments in boxing fans' wishful romance with the fascinating Fernando? Or is this already, just nine years removed from the beginning, the end of the road? Emmanuel Stewart, uh, the feature piece asked the question, how much was lost in the five knockdown loss to Trinidad? I know fans who think that because of the way he was beaten up by Trinidad and De La Hoya, Vargas will never be the same again. Is that a valid point of view? Personally, myself, I have a little doubt to myself because not only did he lose to two fighters who were much more experienced than he was at the time, he suffered a terrific beating in both of those fights. The fight with Trinidad was knocked down five towns, took a big beating, and also the fight with uh, De La Hoya. A lot of times you got me lose, but they don't take the beating in here. And in addition to that, the back problem. So I really don't know, see whether he can make a full recovery from that beating that he took in both of those, those beatings he took. So he's a giant question mark as a competitive commodity. He's not a question mark as an attraction. Fans have always had a massive romance with Fernando Vargas. But now, partially because, Larry, of the damage he suffered against Trinidad and De La Hoya, he wants to fight in a more conservative, intelligent boxing style. Can the fans who fell in love with Fernando Vargas because of his heart continue to love him as he fights with his mind? If he can blend the old fire with some of the new ice, if he can uh, continue to display that bullet-headed machismo, if he wins, and especially if he gets a rematch with Oscar De La Hoya, and beats him. Why then, in California, that's enough to get you elected governor. But as we saw in the fight earlier tonight, first you have to beat the guy in front of you before all those big plans can be executed. Now, you're nominating Vargas for governor, and he once tested positive for steroids, but then again, well, <laughs> never mind. Tale of the tape now for Fernando Vargas against Javier Castillejo. And you can see the 10-year age advantage for Fernando, who still is only 27 years old. Equal in height at 5'10". Equal in arm length at 23 and a half inches from armpit to end of fist. Both weighed in at 154. Tonight, a five-pound unofficial weight advantage, if you want to call it that, for Castillejo. Vargas at a trim fit 167 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial scorer, Harold Letterman. The Fernando Vargas Javier Castillejo fight is scheduled for 10 rounds, non title, using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Conditions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accident or headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including 
the tenth and final round. Jim. And Javier Castillejo begins to make his way into the arena. Very calm, very composed veteran. 7-0 uh, and oh with six knockouts, as you see, since the loss to Oscar De La Hoya. After the fight with De La Hoya, in which he went the distance, got knocked down with five seconds to go, was beaten on a relatively one-sided decision, he said, frankly, that man's too fast for me. On the other hand, Vargas does not have that kind of blinding speed. When he was a teenager, his mother discovered boxing paraphernalia in a gym bag and nearly fainted, told him he can't become a fighter, a prize fighter. He said, then I'll be a bullfighter. She said, okay, you can be a prize fighter. He has run with the bulls in the festivals of Spain, but he fights more like a bullfighter. I asked him if the excitement of running with bulls was on a level with the excitement of fighting in a prize fight. And he told me in Spanish, compared to running with bulls, fighting a prize fight is like taking a nap. <laughs> His wife, Marta, accompanied him all the way from Madrid to Chicago for the fight. But tonight, has elected to stay at the hotel rather than to come to the arena because she gets too nervous watching her husband fight. Well, who was that woman he just kissed then, Jim? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm going on the information our producers have given me, but maybe there are other Spanish women in the arena here tonight. It's a good question. Maybe they know in Madrid Incidentally, Roman Karmazin recently dominated Kasim Uma to take a title belt at 154 pounds. Castillejo easily beat Karmazin. On the other hand, he lost twice to Laurent Boudouani, who was sort of the Javier Castillejo of the 90s. A tough French fighter with an awkward style who was difficult for opponents to solve. If Fernando Vargas had beaten Oscar De La Hoya, his next opponent would have been Javier Castillejo. Now here comes the pride of Oxnard, California, who came here a few years ago to Chicago to watch his Olympic teammate David Diaz fight and was treated so warmly with such welcome by the crowd that he promised himself and his followers at that time that someday he'd come back to Chicago to fight a professional fight, and tonight he lives up to that pledge. Marcus, the sociologist, told us yesterday Chicago has the second largest Mexican-American population of any city in the United States behind only Los Angeles. He wants to do a uh, national tour, it seems, to see how much love he can get in every Mexican-dominated city. So if he wins, maybe San Antonio, here we come. <laughs> On the other hand, there are many who believe that a Vargas versus De La Hoya fight is already penciled in for May of 2006. Some say, in fact, the entire comeback enterprise is about making that one fight and the big dollars that it would generate. The crowd rises for ferocious Fernando Vargas, who now wants to fight more meticulously and less ferociously. His greatest performance was against Ike Quarte. And then the two noteworthy losses, both of which produced physical damage. Already, Jim, Chicago has had a better fight tonight than they had in each of their recent two fights which were the first big fights in this town in decades. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, 
from Allstate Arena here in Rosemont, Illinois. Main Events is proud to present the featured bout of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the junior middleweight division. Brought to you in association with 8 Count Productions and Rhymer Box. Sponsored by Miller Lite and Sportsbook.com. Sanctioned by the State of Illinois Division of Regulation, Professional Boxing Board, Chief of Boxing, Ron Pusillo, Executive Manager, Joel Camposano. At ringside, the three judges assigned to score this contest on the 10-point system, Steve Corvo, Mauro Di Fiore, and Ted Gimza, and when the bell rings, your referee in charge, Gino Rodriguez. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with black, official weight, 154 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 58 victories, including 40 knockouts, with five defeats. From Madrid, España, the two-time junior middleweight world champion, El Inci de Parla, Javier Castillo. Across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the colors of his Mexican heritage, green, red, and white. Official weight also 154 pounds. His professional record, 25 victories, including 22 knockouts with only two defeats. He is the Aztec warrior of La Colonia Boxing, Oxnard, California. Former two-time junior middleweight champion of the world. Ferros, ferocious, Fernando Vargas. Okay, gentlemen, you got your instructions. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Now, here will be good punches. Here will be good punches, all right? Good luck. Fernando Vargas couldn't beat Trinidad by brawling. He couldn't beat Oscar De La Roya by muscling up. So he's going to try it tonight the old-fashioned way by boxing as well as punching. I think maybe he's overreacted to those two losses to the extreme. And I liked him the way he was when he was, he was always a good boxer anyway. He never was a careless fighter. He just got caught in the uh, fight. I, I disagree. I think he used to hang his head up there inviting good punches to hit him. But I thought he was always to be very technical, very patient. I think he got emotional in the fights, primarily with Felix Trinidad and with Oscar De La Hoya because he had his emotions getting away. But up until then, he was a pretty much a technical fighter. Hey, incidentally, he wasn't blown out of either of those two fights. And in both of those fights, there were moments when not only was, it a, was he competitive, but it appeared that he might be in control of the fight and headed toward victory against both Trinidad and De La Hoya. So it wasn't as if they were one-sided blowout fights. No, I think the uh, first fight with Trinidad, it made about the eighth and ninth round. It was back even again because he came back and knocked Trinidad down. He knocked Trinidad down in the fourth round. He was back in the fight and seeming to lead in about the seventh round. And then Trinidad started to catch him with left hooks again. And, of course, against De La Hoya, he won the odd rounds right on through the ninth and was outlanding De La Hoya in power punches until Oscar reeled him in like a matador down the stretch and landed the big left hooks that turned it around and won it.
So far, Ian Castillejo stand in the middle of the ring and match jabs. Vargas is fighting the you know, boxing, trying to be very technical right now. But he's going to have to let some firepower go somewhere to get some respect. But this is Castillo's fight. This is the type of fight that he wants to fight. Yeah, Castillejo is a finesse fighter. Elince on the back of the trunks translates in English to the links. L-Y-N-X. Castillejo's nickname. It's a footwork festival in round one. Yeah, when it's fighting this type of a fight here, the fight could be very close and then maybe even fight, favor Castillejo. You don't have to be careless, but he's going to have to step it up a little bit more and punch with a few more power punches. Crowd beginning to boo in round one. And this goes to Larry's point about fans wanting to see the Fernando Vargas with whom they were in love. Left hook to the body by Vargas, his best punch in round one. Right hand across the top lands, so does a left hook and a right cross, two body shots. Castillejo not throwing back as the bell sounds for the end of round one. Talk about stealing a round in the last 10 seconds. That, that was a textbook job. The round was up for grabs, and he landed at one right hand, and that was it. I was about to score at a 10-10 round. Yeah, give me the head move. You don't have don't to do that now. Like that. Give me the shit. Jab, straight right hand. Get around the side over here. All right? Where's the water? In Castillejo's corner, they speak Spanish, and our interpreter is Jerry Olaf. He will not be able to stand He's fighting a 37-year-old man who cannot stand a real fast pressured fight, so he should step up the tempo. You have to be aware when he comes in, move it to the side. Bring your hands in too. Move, move. Here Vargas showing that he can fire out of that icy boxing style. Box numbers in round one. Vargas six out of 25. Castillejo three out of 46. Five of Vargas's six connects in the last minute again. He stole the round in the last 10 seconds. We'll see if Castillejo becomes more aggressive in round two after having contented himself mostly to match footwork and pose with Vargas in round one. Well, Cassia is not going to be too much more aggressive. He's a technical fighter, and at his age, he's not as fast as he used to be. He's right there wide open once Fernando starts stepping up the pace, putting the heat on, making him uncomfortable. He'll fall apart. He's getting a million bucks, and we're a long way from Madrid. Is it possible that Castillejo at age 37 is here for a paycheck, Manny? I think so. I think he's trying to win the fight, but I think he took this fight because it was more money to be made and probably maybe thinking he could win but i don't think that he's going to win this fight well what we've seen typically with fighters toward late in their career is they'll make the best effort possible for as long as possible but if they see it's not paying off then they'll give up yeah. another right hand by vargas landed cleanly money becomes a bigger factor each year that you get older in boxing fighter can tell you what he is going to do when he retires and there's a rally by Castillejo so let me not sell him short quite yet but he knows what he's going to do when his boxing career is over he wants to open boxing academies in Spain and see if if Spain can produce more boxers probably never quite as many boxers as clay court tennis players Vargas is now seem like having a confusion about whether he wants to be Fernando Vargas or Floyd Mayweather Jr. And he gets clocked on a straight right hand lead by Castillejo, and Castillejo has been the aggressor and the more effective fighter for the last minute or so. Good left hook by Castillejo. But not really landing anything. Vargas showing his defensive techniques.
Good job blocking the body punches by Vargas. Then he slipped the left hook. Ducks the right hand and slips the left there. This is the stuff that Vargas says is so thrilling for him to learn from new trainer Danny Smith. Suggests the kind of trouble that Vargas might get himself into if he elects to fight a finesse fight, a boxing match with Castillo, instead of unloading some leather on it. Yeah, he's going to put his mind is too much in a defense right? mode for That's me at this stage when it's not necessary. You're, not, you're getting close enough to get your jab off, but you're not doing it. Get your jab off. If, once you hit it with it, give me both sides over here or throw the straight right hand down the center behind the, behind the jab. You understand? What box? Open your eyes a little bit. Quiet corner. They don't bother to tell Castillejo everything or anything. He, at age 37, I guess they figure he knows it all. 63 fights, 58 wins, five losses. If he can't see what's going on in there, <laughs> who would? Castillejo off balance with a single left-hand body shot after Castillejo had thrown four or five pretty jabs. Vargas is now trying to get Castillejo to, to take the lead, but Castillejo is being very careful. Castillejo adjusting his good right hand by Castillejo. While Vargas goes to the body. Now there's a good Fernando Vargas jab. But with the exception of that series of combinations at the end of round one, Vargas has been mostly one punch at a time against Castillejo. Right hand body shot there by Fernando. Little right hand inside by Castillejo. And he goes back to sticking the jab. Vargas digging to the body with both the right and the left. Ducks Castillejo and gets in another solid body shot. Vargas doing a nice job of going to the body. This has been an excellent round of body punching for Fernando. All Fernando has to do is just keep shooting the short jab right there. His jab is very, very effective right there. And as a fighter gets older, that's the worst punch in the world to get hit with is a jab because you don't see it as good. It's a reflexes. Vargas is also doing reasonably well blocking Castillejo's body shots with his arms and elbows. More of what he's learning from Danny Smith, the new trainer. Defensively oriented. Fernando's original and boyhood trainer is also his father figure, Eduardo Garcia. And Fernando was eager to point out that although Garcia is not here, he still gets a paycheck from this fight. And according to, to Vargas, always will. Right hand by Vargas stuns Castillejo. And down he goes after two more punches. Vargas seems to take a moment to react to the fact that he had hurt Castillo with the right hand. But then stepped over and finished the job to produce the first knockdown of the fight. Well, there's a little pad on the scorecards for Fernando. Okay, okay. Breathe, breathe. No problem, you're right. The 
Charlie de Chao. Now you've got a counter punch, man. How is it? The body punching that Vargas invested early in the round and in this fight paid off there when he found an opening upstairs. Followed by those two left hooks to clean it up. Fernando Vargas shows the first flash of his old thudding power in this comeback phase of his career. And Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. Three rounds to nothing. 30 to 26. Ferocious Fernando Vargas. Jim, I got to tell you something. From where I was sitting, I thought Fernando Vargas in rounds one and two was really landing the much harder shots. Fighting flat-footed, going to the body 100% of the time. I mean, he really slapped the Dubcast Vallejo, and when he put that right hand on the side of his head, he really knocked him down, and he gets an extra point in the third round. And Cast three to nothing, Vargas. Castillejo's beginning to look a little bit discouraged, Emmanuel. Yeah, he looks, he looks, he's beginning to look his age, and, and Vargas is doing what he should do now. He's a younger, stronger man. He's making this guy fight at a more faster and, and intense pace than he wants to fight at. And, and being that Castillo's not a big puncher anyway, it's just a matter of time before he knocks him out. And the left hook to the body there, I think it was the intelligence and the persistence of the body attack that set up the knockdown. And uh, now Vargas, enthused and encouraged by what he did, is willing to trade a little bit more. Vargas a little quicker on his feet. Knockdown brings out the life in every fight. Castillejo misses with a hard right hand and takes a four-punch combination. Then comes back with a three-punch combination of his own. Castillejo is showing some gumption here. Probably feels he has to do something to stay in this fight. Castillejo unveiling his own left hook. Landed it about 15 seconds ago. Now Vargas sticks the jab again. Thudding jab by Vargas. Knocks Castillejo back. But the, the, the jab, I think, is a factor in this fight. Whoever jabs the best is going to end up getting a slight edge. But I think Vargas' jab is the better jab, though. He just is amusing. Castillejo jabs more. Vargas is his heavier. Vargas ducks inside, gets in a little body shot. Castillejo tries to duck under the right hands. He's got to be careful that he doesn't bob right up into one. He caught one flush on the face right there. Yeah, it seems I think he's gotten warmed up to him right now. But Vargas still is a much bigger puncher. Four rounds complete. Hey, you're looking for the wrong punches, man. I'm telling you, it's one, two. It's the jab. He's a basic fighter. A basic puncher, get him out of here. Just stick with the jab, stick with the head movement. Right hand, left to the body. You, you're making mistakes, you're dropping your hands when you get close. You're standing up here doing this shit. I want you weaving over to the right side. I don't want to ever see you up like that. Wipe the side of his head. Throw the hook to the body and then two or three over the top. Come on, at the head. Hit him in the head. You're better. You're better, Javi. You're doing better, Javier. Beginning of round five at the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Illinois, formerly the Rosemont Horizon. Seen tonight of Fernando Vargas's latest comeback fight, coming off years of difficulty following his loss to Oscar Deloya. Vargas fought a middleweight, Raymond Joval, in May, and essentially outboxed Joval in a fight 
which he fought more or less safety first against a guy who was throwing 100, 105 punches around. Tonight, different kind of opponent, Vargas more aggressive. I must give him a lot of credit for getting his weight down because I know at one time I was with him, looked like he was around 200 pounds. And it's taken a lot of work for him to get back to 154 pounds. The undercard fight, Juarez Soto was scheduled for 12 rounds, title eliminator. This is a 10 round fight. Fernando Vargas has already won the first five rounds on Harold Letterman's card, or excuse me, the first four rounds on Harold Letterman's card. This is the fifth. Castillejo going back to working his jab in this round. Right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You heard Vargas' trainer, Danny Smith, saying you're searching for the wrong combinations in there. Go back and throw out and throw simple one-twos. That's all they do is keep working his jab, 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 right hand and left hook. Solid right hand by Vargas. It's a very good right hand. It seems like Castillo just got warmed up now. The night we watched Vargas fighting Oscar De La Hoya, both incidentally with reputations as big left hookers, it became abundantly clear in that fight that both fighters had way better right hands than generally they had been given credit for. It, it, it seems like since Vargas has decided to take on the role as being the boxer tonight. That Castillo has changed his role from being a boxer, decided he's going to be the aggressive fighter tonight. Well, what, what that means is to me, Emmanuel, is that he's meant that Vargas is dictating what happens in there. If he's making the other guy fight a fight he's not normally into and he's beating him, then all credit to him for showing the discipline, the movement. The patience and the right hand. Wowing the crowd with that solid right cross. Now Castillejo lands three punches in a row. Almost catches Vargas with a right cross, flopping down. There's blood in Vargas's mouth. Good left hook by Fernando Vargas to punctuate that round. Well, it's a better right hand here, Jim, than he did when he threw the opening ball at the Cub game. Well, that wouldn't take much, unfortunately. Push your mouth out. You're making it hard. And since you asked for it, Larry, here, August 12th, Vargas throwing out the first ball at the Cubs game. Ventura County, California has produced a lot of Major League Baseball players. That isn't one of them. That is a fighter. That was sort of a right cross Use of the a first pitch. Straight right hand, weave back to the right side. Don't come back to the center. You don't have your hand, your right hand tucked down like that and you're standing up like that. Okay. Come on, let's go to work. Come on, baby. Vargas talking about becoming a terrific defensive fighter. Javier Castillejo, credited by CompuBox with landing only 36 punches in the first five rounds. In other words, Vargas is holding Castillejo to about seven connects per round. That's very low. Extremely low for a seasoned fighter, particularly. We got him, We got him. Go This is a slip, and it's been slippery all night. Vargas's, Vargas's team dumped a bucket of water with ice when they came into the ring. And there's a lot of wet canvas in there. And Vargas is hitting Castillo with right hands pretty much whenever he wants to hit him. But he doesn't have any defense at all. Hot right shots hand. him with the right hand there. Yes, Castillo cannot avoid any of the right hands. Is Javier dropping his left? No, he just doesn't move his head. You get him over the top or through the center. Notice how Vargas keeps his chin tucked in. His problem in the past, when he's had one, is that he hangs, has hanged his head up there, and even when he's winning, 
He's been vulnerable to one big punch. Fortunately for him, if he makes that mechanical error here tonight, he's not fighting a particularly big hitter. If he wins this fight, he could be in position to take a 154-pound title belt opportunity against Ricardo Mayorga, or perhaps go to the De La Hoya fight if, in fact, that piece of business is to take place. I think that the... The Mayorga route is unlikely. Because? Because of all the bitterness over the, politi the, the politics that took away the title of... Castillejo. Castillejo. This was supposed to be for that belt. And they're not going to give Mayorga a big share of the purse when... Vargas is the attraction. Is there in any reason for opponents to still fear Mayorga's sheer savagery and wild style, Emmanuel, or has the myth been punctured? No, no, I think uh, no one's going to fear him anymore. He's been exposed as being a guy who came on, fought the right fight at the right time against Brendan Forrest, and he's ripped off of that, and that's about it. Uh, this fight is interesting, man, because Castillo is like dictating the fight. And physically, the weight advantage that we saw when he came in the ring seemed to be showing up now. He looks physically much bigger. But Vargas just but, uh, Vargas with a hit him. right hand and hit him with two lefts and a right to the body to finish off the round. Tuesday, it's the next edition of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, Bryant challenges the Oakland Raiders' Randy Moss about the problems Moss has faced in his NFL career. If you spend any time at all on the internet, you know what that's about. There was a lot of talk about it on talk radio yesterday. So tune in to see the real sports reality of Bryant's interview with Randy Moss. Stick to what we was doing in there. Hands up, head movement, jab straight right hand, right around here. Here's Vargas throwing a good right hand. And then you'll see how he slips. It was a solid double and a slide head first. You know, it's about six slippages at least in that same spot tonight. Round seven begins. Fernando Vargas has boxed clinically, carefully, and well in the first six rounds. Harold, how do you have it? Look at you, 60 to 53, six rounds to nothing, Fernando Vargas. Jim, I gotta tell you something. Larry said that he's fighting a patient fight. I don't wanna see patient. I wanna see him jump on him. I mean, I I'm falling asleep. This guy is a good fighter, out punching him by a mile. He really ought to jump on him and get him out of there. And that's all he was doing. Go forward and stop circling. Harold, he's got a bad back. He's got a swollen L5 disc. He wants to fight several more fights in such a way as to protect that bad back. Maybe that's why he's not jumping on it. Well, and besides that, um, why change his style? He's working on a style that he's going to need when he fights better fighters. Take the knockout if it's there. And, and the way Castileo is following him around the ring, he may leave himself open for a big shot. No, Castillo, he's hitting with right hands when he wants to. He just, he needs to try to put something else behind him when he lands a right hand, because he's hitting him at will. And for those who, who agree with Harold at home, incidentally, it's only 10 rounds. Hey, Emmanuel, what about the idea of a star fighter near the top of the game trying to fight with a bad back, a, a disc which would be surgically repaired if he weren't a fighter. Well, it's something that I, like I said, I, I'm not really totally convinced that he's 100% back when you consider that plus the damage he was suffering in those two fights. But I give him credit for at least coming back, getting his weight down, and at this stage, he's fighting good, good fights. I would give him credit for the most part. But this fight here, I just, I'm like hell to some degree. I don't know if back and back so much and letting this guy get his confidence up it's making it to be a very difficult fight as it's going down the stretch. If you're going to give a round to Castillejo, he wouldn't do too badly to give him this one. In this round, he's been the aggressor, has had the initiative, and Vargas has not been able to answer a lot of what Castillejo has done. But a mighty shot by Fernando was low. 
for the most part, the only effective punch that, that Fernando's been consistent with has been the right hand lead for the most part. And, uh, but he hasn't operated at all with his jab, which I think is very good. Incidentally, referee Tim Adams was a big factor in the first fight between Juarez and Soto. We haven't heard a peep out of Gino Rodriguez uh, of Illinois other than to rule Vargas's tumble to the canvas a slip. There hasn't been a clinch in the fight. This is a very good round for both fighters. And now Vargas is coming back. And Castillejo puts in a right hand as if to say, wait a minute, you're not going to steal this round from me. Well, I, I just couldn't figure out how Castillejo doesn't move away from any of those right hands and he's still taking them. Javi, come on, we gotta attack, we gotta push. You gotta press him, throw all you've got, man. Throw him, press him, three or four hits. Javi, you gotta throw that right over his left arm, over his left shoulder. Listen to me. It's almost over, baby. You, you understand? Nine minutes. I need you to turn, I need you to move. Don't sit there like that. Straight shot. And use the jab and turn. On the inside, hit him with the short jab and turn. Don't sit there and make a war out of this shit, man. Because that's what you're doing. Not nine minutes, 12. Let's go. Four rounds to go, not three. Uh, oh, check it. Nope, I was wrong. All right, that was the seventh. Okay, nine minutes to go. I'm the one who miscounted the rounds, not Danny Smith. Good for you, Danny. Castillejo in that round, 18 out of 68. Those were his high totals so far in the fight. Vargas 15 out of 46. Harold Letterman takes my cue and gives the round to Javier Castillejo. It's that easy. Not always. Danny Smith asking Vargas for a little more energy. He comes out and throws more right hands. Good left hand dug to the lower level of the, the abdomen and Castillejo touched his cup as if to say to referee Gino Rodriguez, when are you going to warn him about low blows? Yeah, most of them are really right on the high part of the cup, uh, really where the, the waistband is in this case here. Vargas took one of the most damaging low blows of recent years in the fight with Trinidad at a moment in the fourth round when he was gaining momentum. Harold Letterman. They want to see Vargas jump on Castillejo. You know, before you be too critical of myself, I like to really think because the fighter could have an injury, he had a lot of different problems he has, and it's easy to criticize him. We're sitting here just watching. Yeah. He listens to the crowd, he'll soon be yeah. sitting with the crowd. The Fernando Vargas, who was a kid, still at age 22 or 23, might have listened to this crowd. This Fernando Vargas has become a man and has more control over himself. I don't recall Vargas throwing as many body punches before. Last two rounds against Winky Wright. When he had to stage a spectacular rally to get a chance to win the fight. Yeah, and that brings up another point. For a young fighter, he's been in with a lot of strong, good fighters. In fact, we call Winky Wright and won a majority of decisions over him. Been in there with Felix Trinidad. Ike Corti, physically one of the strongest welterweights has been out here. Oscar De La Hoya, he's been in with some tough, tough fighters to be a young man. Vargas rally, and he starts to bust Castillejo up at close range. Tremendous rally down the stretch by Fernando Vargas, as if to say, hey, you judges, you give me the eighth round, not him. Fernando Vargas's three hijos, three terrific young sons. That's the mother to the far left. 
That's Fernando's mother, Grandma, in the middle. Very good flurry combination of punches while he's defending himself. This is what he would like in the best of all worlds to be able to do more often. Can you tell me that? Mm -hmm. All right then. Suck it up, don't trade, hands up, and move. Compi box numbers in round eight. Vargas 24 out of 58, Castillejo 21 out of 54. Very even, but 15 of Vargas's 24 connects came in the last minute of the round. Again, rallying to steal the round, or so it appeared. Thirty-seven-year-old Javier Castillejo of Spain trying to reel in twenty-seven-year-old Fernando Vargas of Oxnard, California, in Chicago on Boxing After Dark. In case you joined us after the preliminary bout, a stirring upset as Umberto Soto thrown in in the last two weeks to replace the injured engine team produced the first loss for American Rocky Juarez. The unanimous decision win. Vargas back to his one-twos, jabs and right hands, landing consistently here. Little left hook to the body, and another thudding right hand. Castillejo following Vargas around, and occasionally strafing him with jabs and left hooks. Castillejo's a tough customer, he shows you that. Yeah, even though he's been getting hit with a lot of punches his last two rounds, I haven't saw him get hurt at all, and he's still making it very uncomfortable for Fernando at this stage. And I hate to say this, but it looks like being 10 rounds as the schedule is going to be more to the advantage of Vargas rather than 12 rounds, which I think would favor Castillo the way it's going. Castillejo starting to come on strong in this round. A minute to go, it's an even round. Vargas moving again, trying to set up his shots. In all the fights you mentioned before, Emmanuel, the big fights that he's had at such a young age, they all went nearly the distance. He's not a big puncher. He's a volume puncher like this against quality opponents. And that also means that he had a lot of wear and tear on his body in those fights too. Javier Castillejo got hit at will by the faster Oscar De La Hoya. Never checked out, never wilted, hung in, fought to the finish, was knocked down with five seconds to go. Vargas knocked Castillejo down here in the second round. Since that time, Castillejo's gotten stronger. He said he wanted to be a bullfighter, but he's a pretty good bull, too. Absolutely. I'm making a war out of this, baby. You got three minutes. Talk to me. It was the third round Can when the knockdown took minutes? place. Can you box for three minutes? Can you use the jab and turn and don't trade? Huh? Can you do that? Talk to me. Don't worry about the fucking crowd. Don't worry about no fucking war. You turn. You jab. You turn. You jab. All right? All right. This round is it. He's got nothing else, man. Got to give it all. Come on, Javi. He's hurt, man. He's got nothing left, Javi. Come on, he just throws two. He throws two and that's it. He only throws during a minute. You've got to press him. You've got to press him. And throw. Throw with vigor. Be smart. Quit dropping your hands, man. Towel, towel. Castileo called himself an all-terrain boxer, fighter, not just a boxer, and he has shown that tonight. However, Vargas has the CompuBox statistical edge, 
his average round through nine rounds, 18 out of 46. Castillo's average round, 11 out of 55. Incidentally, Oscar De La Hoya flooded Castillo with punches, landing an average of 35 per round. But that was a younger De La Hoya under slightly different circumstances. Well, you know, Castillo just can't pull the trigger, so to say. He gets in position, but he still can't get the punches off that much for the most part. Now, you heard Danny Smith imploring Vargas not to listen to the crowd. Can you jab and then turn? Jab and turn. That's what he asked for. All he has to do with the box now. He should be convinced now that he's not going to knock the guy out because he's hit him with everything. So I would just take off the clock and just box, box, box. Try to win a decision. And that is exactly what Danny Smith was urging him to do. shots by Vargas in the last minute both with the left and the right hand and using his feet making it impossible for Castillejo to land a combination Vargas doing exactly what trainer Danny Smith asked him to do in this the final round of the fight The new Fernando Vargas, boxing and moving to a clinical victory over Javier Castillejo of Spain, or at least so it would appear. We'll wait the scorecards to see if I've messed up badly by saying that, but it feels like a Vargas unanimous decision. The crowd wanted something more exciting. Well, this is what they should do in the last round. Now, one question that I'm going to have to ask Vargas is whether or not he, he broke his jaw in this fight, the way it looked there at the end. Javier Castillejo may have just appeared in the United States for the last time. In fact, you may have just seen his last round of boxing. It's possible he's 37 years old. This was a big paycheck of the kind that could conceivably put the capper on his career. Fernando Vargas, who beat Raymond Joval, a middleweight in May, to begin this latest comeback from back problems, the drug suspension following the De La Hoya fight, uh, a change in style which is an attempt to make him a safer, more clinical boxer. Vargas threw 35 jabs in the last round. He had averaged 23 jabs for the fight. So one thing is for certain, Fernando is doing a devoted job of listening to trainer Danny Smith and attempting to execute those new strategies in the ring. <laughs> Round three knockdown provided a little early scoring cushion for Castillejo. Here's a look at the knockdown with a solid right hand and a left to follow. Boom. Castillejo kind of freezes there in suspended animation and Vargas with two lefts, deposits him on the canvas. Michael Buffer has the numbers. Let's go to the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Ted Gimza and Steve Corzo both score the belt, 97-92. Mauro De Fiore scores at 98-91. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Ferocious Fernando Varga. Effective boxing, safe unanimous decision, another win for Fernando Vargas. Final CompuBox numbers, and I think they're going to show you that Vargas threw a little bit 
more sparingly than Castillejo. Indeed, Castillejo throwing 73 more punches. But Vargas with 73 more connects lands at a much higher connect percentage. Power punches and Vargas's connect percentage and power punches will go higher up to 46%. 112 out of 46. A lot of them good body punches. Castillejo did some damage, but not a big enough hitter to really threaten Fernando with jeopardy in the fight. And Larry Merchant stands by with Fernando Vargas. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Fernando. First, I have to ask you, did you hurt your jaw in this fight? Uh, somewhat. Um, hit me with a, with a left hook, I think. When was it? Uh, I don't remember what round it was, but I can see that uh, it's pretty swollen. Do you think it's broken? Maybe. Oh, well. What, how would you rate your performance on this night? I just... I, 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 I felt bad. I didn't feel good from round one. You know, um, I felt slow. Why is that? I, I don't know. You know. Maybe fighting so late. But there's no excuses, you know. Um, Kase was a tough, tough, durable champion. And, um, you know, he came to fight. He has a lot more experience than I do. But, you know, I was able to... To still work on some of the things even though I wasn't feeling the way I should. We'll, we'll look into that at a later time, but for now, um, you did knock him down in the third round. Did you think you would be able to finish him yeah. somewhere after this? Well, that's what I thought. You know, I hit him with that one, two, and, um, and we'll... Uh, All right, there's a fight going on in the stands. But, uh, Fernando, let's talk. Now, nobody paid to see that particular fight. They did pay to see your fight or took the time to see it. So, did you think you were going to get him? I thought I was. But like I said, he's a durable champion. He's a durable fighter. And um, he came to fight, you know what I'm saying? And um, I knew he was going to be in a pushover. Do you you said before this fight that you felt more natural in using your newer boxing style. Did you feel that in the fight? Um, I did in somewhat, in some sense. I still felt a little off from round one. It's probably from, because we fought so late. And, um, you know. All right, there, there, there's a fight going on out there in the stands, and many of your your team, your crew seems to be involved, or are they breaking it up? They're breaking it up. They're trying to keep peace. I don't know what's going on. Hey, hey, Paralos! What were your feelings about the crowd, which wasn't too happy with? the pace of the fight from no, time want, to time. They want me to go to war, and I'm not going about to do that. You know, um, um, I still ended up winning the fight. Coach wanted me to box. I still, I'm not happy with my performance at all. But, you know, I'm just going to keep on practicing his, his craft. You're going to understand I've only had one trainer my whole life. Fernando, you just want to fight convincingly you, against a tough guy. Very tough guy. Too. So why why are you so unhappy? Because, you know, I like to look better. I like to to shine better. You know, I'm my own worst critic. Um, I, even though I work hard, I think I, I still about box them. I still, you know, I'll jab them. I still did what I needed to do to win the fight. And like you say, you know, sometimes just win the fight, and then the next time you'll feel better or look better. All right, there's been much talk about the possibility of a rematch with Oscar De La Hoya, perhaps next spring. You want to fight before that? Uh, absolutely. You know, I don't feel good. I don't feel... Uh, this is my first time at 154 and since I fought Oscar. And Oscar's a Hall of Famer. He's a, you know, a great world champion. And, um, you know, he says publicly he will fight me and shows what type of champion he is. So... You know, I, it's my hat's too tough to Do you have to fight for a title? No. You've said, I'd rather have the greenbacks, the money, instead of the green belt, which is the WBC belt. Are you going to go chasing a belt now? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't need to do that. 
Um, I'm very happy with going to different cities in the United States and my fans that uh, supporting me and showing up for me. So I don't really have to fight for a title. It's not like I need to. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations you. again, Fernando. Jim? All right, Fernando Vargas, you saw the swollen jaw, clearly some kind of damage done there. And of course, Fernando's typical response to his clinical boxing win, not exactly the way he would most like to be. So there's an ongoing struggle, I'm sure, in his mind. Manny, let's get down to brass tacks. Was it good enough to set up a massive gross for a pay-per-view with De La Hoya, or is that a given, given the identities of the two fighters? Yes, it was still sell. I think he and Oscar De La Hoya were still sell because you got to remember, Oscar hasn't had stellar performances his last few fights, so it'll be a big, big fight, in, uh, particularly in California, probably Cinco de Mayo or something in that neighborhood. But it would still be a big fight because both guys were not that super impressive in their last fights. Yeah, and assuming that De La Hoya is willing to go to a fight with Vargas, uh, maybe with one prior fight, uh, a tune-up, or maybe not, if you're managing Vargas, is he ready for that already, or does he need another fight? I don't think another fight would do much better. I think he needs to just get in the gym and try to get in the best of shape that he can for the fight. And naturally, you know, Oscar is the type of guy that probably is not going to take a tune-up. He's going to go for the big fight. But I think it's going to be a very interesting competitive fight. I would want to see it. Because emotions are going to get involved in the fight anyway, and that would make it a good fight on top of everything else. Pretty scary weekend for you, Larry. You uh, all but predicted after the fighter meetings yesterday that Soto would score his upset over Juarez. And I think you also uh, pointed out uh, very carefully yesterday exactly what kind of a fight we were going to see with Vargas here tonight. And that came true. What are your final thoughts after uh, both of those inner predictions came true for you? I thought it was a good card. I thought they were two good fights. Neither one was for a belt, which reminds me. Castileo had his belt stripped so that a fighter, Mayorga, who had never fought at this weight and who had been knocked out in his previous fight could challenge for a championship. Castileo decided to give up the belt and fight Vargas for more money. We have seen two of the two best light heavyweights in the world recently do the same thing, Tarver and Johnson. We have seen Winky Wright strip of all of his titles. This week, for the craziest reason of all, so crazy I don't even want to get into it, the best featherweight in the world was stripped of his title, Juan Manuel Marquez. What relevance do these titles have anymore? Yes, they give identities to young fighters who want to be known, and there is an emotional component for fighters who want to be validated by having these belts. But do the fans really care? Do they know who has what belt? When is the media going to stop emphasizing these belts? and start emphasizing the right thing, the fights themselves. This medium does. By the way, uh, Manny Pacquiao and uh, Eric Morales may be headed for a rematch with, either, with each other. That's not necessarily about any belts. Uh, on September 10, we'll be showing both of them on a doubleheader. Uh, and Pacquiao will be fighting against Hector Velasquez, a fighter who was decisioned over the course of 12 rounds uh, last year by Rocky Juarez. What do you expect to see out of Pacquiao as he gets ready to go to another big fight, probably against Morales? Uh, Jim, I think that all the top fighters deserve occasional easier fights. Um, I think that these two fighters have fought tough guys. But let's face what this is. These are just tune-ups for the eventual rematch next December. Hopefully, we'll get a fight out of it. Emmanuel, let's talk about the other tune-up. Eric Morales boxed to beat Manny Pacquiao. Now he fights a skillful boxer, Zahir Rahim. So does Morales box again, or does he go back to being Eric Morales? He has to go back to being Eric Morales. High volume of punches, because Rahim is a very stylish, classic fighter who likes to stay out of harm's way and do just enough to win his fights. So Morales will have to go back to being his old self and uh, put a lot of pressure on. 
But it should be an interesting fight because he's fighting one of the most skillful boxers that he will have one into in his career, I guess. And what's more entertaining than Eric Morales in full cry, brawling rather than boxing? Not too many things, I assure you.